On December the 4th, 2009, 54-year-old Carol Taylor was having her hair done at a friend's home near 170th Street in Miami Gardens. When she left the hairdresser, she didn't make it far because she was targeted by a killer wielding an AK-47. Here's the case. Carol is my second born, born May 3rd, 1955. Everyone loved her. She had the personality, she had the heart. All my life, my conscious memory, I've always had a sister because she was 356 days younger than me. In junior high school, high school, she ran track. She was a great singer. She wrote her own music, and she was in a band. She was you know, lead singer. I was so proud of her because she was so outgoing, and I would ask her for advice <laughs> in, in dating because I was uh, more introverted. Like, I loved being with her. She was a loving person, and no matter what your problem was, if you needed something, she was there. Always had a helping hand for everyone. When we decided to come to Florida, Carol came down with my wife and I. She wasn't in Florida three weeks and she found a job teaching. They loved her and she loved the children. Her flamboyancy was all over. Carol was very funny. Her nickname was The Funny because she always made people laugh and joke and she was the life of the party. People knew Carol first. Oh, you're, Carol, you're Carol's brother. <laughs> she wasn't Kevin's sister. She loved children. She was not fortunate to have a child of her own. She had been married before, but the marriage didn't work out. Carol was married three times. Her first husband, the love of her life, was on a ship called the Port. Four or five months after marriage, the ship disappeared. Everyone on the ship was declared dead, and it hurt Carol deeply because she was so in love with her husband. She was so, so hard given so loving. We cannot fathom that anyone would want to harm her. Is it a male or female that was shot? I don't know. They in the car and they thought she's going to search me. All I heard was a horn going in. I heard the scene like for him to move out the way. And when he went in the front of the car, he just got out one person on the passenger side and started shooting. And then he just stopped shooting and then he jumped in the car and left. Then the car started going in a circle from then on. Okay. All right, we're on the way. On December 4, 2009, at approximately 8.20 p.m., Carol Taylor was actually at a family friend's house, and she was having her hair done, uh, which is within the city of Miami Gardens. While she was there, she was allegedly making a lot of phone calls and texting some friends uh, while her hair was being done. Once her hair was completed by her friend, she ended up uh, getting back into her vehicle and uh, she had left westbound on Northwest 169th Terrace. Uh, it, it appears that she had gone around a block at that point. It appears that Carol had just pulled to the T intersection uh, located at Northwest 38th Court and Northwest 170th Street. She was actually traveling eastbound. She had stopped for the stop sign, which she was supposed to do. Uh, as soon as she had continued forward from her stop, she was confronted by a red vehicle that had rapidly accelerated in front of her vehicle as she had already attempted to uh, drive into the intersection. At that point, the passenger suspect gets out of the vehicle. That suspect is armed with a high caliber rifle. Carol obviously observed that something bad was happening at that point, and she had placed her vehicle into reverse. The suspect makes his way towards the passenger side of Carol's vehicle and starts shooting multiple shots into the passenger side of Carol's car. Ms. Taylor was hit, unfortunately, fatally with the projectiles that were shot into the passenger side of her car. And uh, since her vehicle was already in reverse, uh, the vehicle was observed traveling in a counterclockwise motion in reverse when officers got to the scene. My daughter was murdered at 8 o'clock. I didn't hear about it until 4 a.m. in the morning. My husband and I were sleeping, and the phone rang. And I just started screaming because I couldn't believe my child was gone. And then afterwards, I called my son, and I told him because they were like this. I said, Mom, please don't tell me. I said, Mom, please don't tell me. Don't tell me that. Don't tell me that. We were in a state of shock. We lost a jewel. A part of us is gone. And before my time is up, I hope that justice be served. Only God knows. Any parent 
that has a child that 21 bullets were shot into her car, they would feel the same as me. I can't fathom my daughter not being with me. The phone rings and I, and I want to run to the phone because I want to talk to her. We talked every day. My sister was such a beautiful person that the police told us that in her entire life, she didn't even have a traffic ticket, nothing. This is someone that actually served her country in the Air Force. This is a woman that went to work every day. This is a, a woman that uh, provided for everyone else. And so it's very difficult to understand why somebody would have killed Carol, especially in this fashion. An innocent woman to be brutally shot down with an AK-47, an automatic rifle, in such a violent, senseless act. My husband's been sick from this. He's an 80-year-old man. I almost died about three weeks ago. And I just hope that the Lord will make a way for us. We just hope that we can bring closure to this. I'm getting very limited cooperation with the course of this investigation. I have very few suspect leads at this point. The suspect was described as a tall, thin black male, possibly wearing a dark colored scully and a white short sleeve shirt, dark colored pants. The suspect was said to be driving a red, Pontiac, either G6 or Grand Prix or something similar. This is really a crime where our victim was a very good person. So right now, what I'd really like is community support as far as anybody that has any information whatsoever that can assist us with solving this crime.